Hey guys, welcome back to church. I'm Tommy Dorfel. You might not recognize me because I'm always in the back playing that bass. And uh, here's announcements. First on our list, we have our Keys Vineyard Jam Night. That's on Wednesday, May 25th at 6.30 p.m. After that is the Summer VBS. That is June 14th through 16th. That's three days from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. all three of those days. You can register online or in the app and make sure you download the app if you haven't already so you can register. And we want to get as many volunteers as possible. That'd be pretty cool, I think. And lastly, I hope you will enjoy this service. So uh, here we go. Woo! Good morning, Vineyard family. We're so excited that you're joining us as we enter into worship. And I can't wait for you to hear what Pastor Doug has for us today. We are on part three of the fruit of the spirit. Do you remember what fruit we're doing today? Have you memorized the Bible verse yet? Okay, are you ready? I'm excited. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, Anne. Long time no see. Yeah. It's been a whole like eight minutes. Well, I saw you like two minutes ago. Ah. Who's counting? Yikes. <laughs> Hopefully you guys have had a good week. We're looking forward to spending time with you in worship and in the word. I'm going to tell you what we'll be attempting to do in case you didn't know. We will start things off with communion. Chaplain Doug is going to lead us through that in just a moment. After communion, we'll have our time of worship. We are going to bring back that newer song we were all learning together last week. After worship, Pastor Gina will come up and lead the kids who'd like to join her through a Bible verse. We will dismiss them off to their Sunday school classes. And then we'll have our time in the word with Pastor Doug. We are in the Fruit of the Spirit, part three. Before we get into any of that, let's pray. Holy Spirit, would you come? We love your presence, Papa. And we're gathered this morning, Papa, to lift you up, to honor you, to declare your great works. and to enjoy you, Papa. So as we're here or as we're watching online, Papa, would you soften our hearts and ready our ears? Papa, we want, us, we want our hearts to be changed. We want our hearts to reflect your heart. Help us to draw closer to you. And we join with all the churches around the world where your gospel is preached with this collect. Almighty God, you alone can order the unruly wills and passions of sinful people. Grant that your people may love what you command and desire what you promise, so that among the many and varied changes of this world, our hearts may be firmly established where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Chaplain Doug. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body, take and eat in remembrance of me. In the same manner he took the cup. It was the last night of the Passover celebration. The cups of plagues and sanctification had already been poured and celebrated. Jesus takes the third cup, which is the cup of redemption. He said, this is my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. Gathered with his friends that evening, Jesus gives us a lasting ordinance or remembrance, which we call communion or the Lord's table or the Lord's supper. He said, from now on, when you get together and partake of this meal, I want you to remember me. And as his friends gathered here today, we too can partake of this meal, the bread and the cup, the body and the blood of the Lord. And we want to remember and give thanks. We want to remember all that Jesus has said and done and promised to do. We want to remember his willingness to go to the cross on our behalf. We want to remember how he defeated death and rose again, and we want to remember with awe and thanksgiving that he's coming back for us soon. So here on the table are the elements of communion, the bread, the cup, the body and the blood of the Lord. The table is open to all who believe. So as we worship this morning and you feel led by the Spirit, please come, partake, remember, and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Doug. We're going to enter now into our time of worship together, and I'd encourage us all to sing out 
and to lift our voices as we elevate Jesus in our midst. We're going to see the words pop up on all the screens. You guys are welcome to sit, but stand if you're able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do
freed the captives and you're freeing hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers then. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same God.
want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. you Lord and we are so so thankful for this time of worship in your presence God you're so good to us Lord you're so faithful and Lord as we are here in your presence I'd ask that you'd be with us as we prepare to study your word Lord God would you anoint the words that are spoken that are taught use those words God to stir up our hearts towards you and Holy Spirit, I'd ask that you'd be with those working with our children. God, anoint them. Give them everything that they need to show all the kids your wonderful love for them, oh God. We love you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And Pastor Georgina, would you please come up and teach the children a Bible verse? Good morning, boys and girls. So today's story comes from the book that comes after the book of Ruth, and it's from 1 
Samuel, yes. And first Samuel has this character named, this man named Elkina. And he has a wife named Hannah. Do you guys know any Hannahs? Yeah, cool. Well, this Hannah didn't have any children and she really wanted a family. Yeah, and then what happened was that every year her, her husband would go to the tabernacle to worship the Lord. And this particular year, he took Hannah with him, right? And Hannah was there and she started to pray. Yeah, she started to pray with, to the Lord and she cried out to him and said, Lord, if you give me a child, I will give him back to you. I will have him serve you, right? All the days of his life. And the high priest, Eli, saw her and thought something was wrong with her and asked her. And she said, I am just sad. And I am just telling God how I feel, right? So he said, he blessed her and said, may God give you what you've asked for. Do you think God answered her prayer? Say thumbs up for yes. Yes or no? Yes. He did. He Oh, I did not. I know, I saw. Okay, can you just sit with me? Good. Okay, so they, she had a son, right? And she named him Samuel. And when he was old enough, she brought him back to the tabernacle and gave him to Eli, right, to serve the Lord. But she visited him, and she had many children also. And guess what happened, guys? He grew up, and he was very obedient to God. And one night while he was sleeping, he heard his name being called. He heard, Samuel, Samuel. So he got up because he thought, oh, Eli needs me, right? So he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. And Eli was like, I didn't call you, right? Go back to sleep. Guess what, guys? This happened three times. Yes, so Eli finally, after the third time, said, oh, it must be the Lord, right, Cole? Calling you, go back to bed. So 1 Samuel, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 10, tells us what happened. It says, and the Lord came and stood calling us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant hears. And then God told them that he was going to punish, right, Eli's family because Eli's sons, there were two of them. Can you show me two guys? Two fingers? Good. There were two of them and they were priests but, and served in the tabernacle. Those, those, right? But they weren't very kind. So God was going to punish them. Right, Michael? Yes. Good job. And then... What happened next is that Samuel grew and the Lord was with him. And everyone in Israel knew that Samuel was God's messenger. God, Samuel told people about God's plan and told them what God was like. But Jesus, right, the Son of God came to earth as a human and he showed us, right, what God is like. And he told and tells us what? God, what God's plan is, right? Very good. Okay. So you guys ready to say the Bible verse with me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All together, okay? 1 Samuel 3.10. 1 Samuel 3.10. And the Lord came. And the Lord came. And stood calling. And stood calling. As at other times. So now we're going to say, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel, Samuel. Good. And Samuel said, speak. Speak. For your servant hears. For your servant hears. Excellent job, boys and girls. So good. And now we get stickers, right? Well done, kiddos. Mm. All the children are receiving uh, smiley face stickers of different kinds. I see one that looks like a bear. That's cool. Uh, there was a birthday in the house, right? Was yes, it Ava. Ava's birthday? How old are you, Ava? Eight. Good for you. Let's sing Ava Happy Birthday as a church together. Ready? All right, here we go. Happy birthday.
awesome job, guys. All right. Uh, Pastor Georgina, would you pray yes. for these kids? All right, boys and girls, are you ready? We're going to pray, so let's bow our heads and close our eyes before we go, okay? Ready? Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord God, for your love, Lord God. We're so thankful, Lord God, that you take care of us, Lord. And we're so thankful, God, that we get to hear from you, Lord God, that you speak. Bless you. In Jesus' name, what do we say, guys? Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay, now you can go to class. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Georgina. The children are heading off to Sunday school. They're going to have a great time. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, welcome once again to the Vineyard. It's great to see you guys here. Super excited. Uh, I said I say that a lot. Super excited to get to share again. My, my folks are, are out of town. They send their love. They miss you guys, uh, but they're having a good time. Uh, we're, we're very thankful for them. A uh, little bit of shopkeeping that we do before we enter into our message here. Uh, we had our, our family fun night this last Wednesday, and that was a super successful event. So everybody who showed up to help, thank you so much for being a part of that. And, and you know, it was, it was a great event. We, we saw all sorts of families that we had no idea who they were. So uh, that, was, that was, like, really cool. That's why we do those events. So... I wanted to say, yes, we did it. Uh, another thing going up on these screens is the Connect Card QR code. Say that 10 times fast, nice. silently, under your breath, not right now. Uh, you can open up, if you've never done this before, you can open up your phone's camera app, and uh, you don't have to take a picture or anything. You just scan it, and a link will pop up. You click that. Uh, it's going to take you to a form where uh, you can give us your info if you want, and you can give it to us, and we'll be in touch with you. It's very basic information, just contact info. And uh, we never bother you too much. It's just a few text messages and some emails, and we don't call you unless you want us to. So uh, it's a great way to get in touch with us. Uh, also, we take this part of the service and we encourage us all to be praying for our neighbors and our communities. It's a great way to, to spread out uh, our prayers. So as you're walking around your neighborhood and you, uh, your home, street, road, at Big Pine we have like roads and uh, I guess everywhere has roads and you probably live on a road too. But pray for everybody that's on those roads and the houses uh, around them. It's, it's a great thing to do. Uh, we are going to pray corporately for our neighbors, so would you, would you pray with me? Holy Spirit, would you come now? God, we, we thank you so much for these islands that we call home. God, it, it, it's amazing to just drive down and, and see the, the, the beauty of your creation and the, the awe that it gives us, Lord. It's, it's so cool. Lord, I thank you for all the islands from Key West to, to Key Largo and, you know, all the islands that I might miss past Key Largo. God, you know, we're so thankful for them. God, I lift up the inhabitants of these islands to you. God, I pray that you'd bless each and every person that calls these islands home. God, we want to see your kingdom break through on our islands, God. We want to see renewal and revival, Lord. So would you come now mightily and bless these people on our islands? And Lord God, I lift up all the churches that neighbor our church, Lord, that are, that are preaching your gospel and doing your work. God, bless them with every resource, provision, and person that they need to fulfill the missions that you've called them to, Lord. We want to see kingdom growth, God, not just at our church, but at all the churches. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. So, we are in a series on the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my dad gave us an intro where we talked about how they are the currency of the kingdom of God. And last week, we talked about love, which is right at the top of the list, and that uh, we're to love God and love others with a, a servant-hearted love. We're to love as, as Jesus loved. So, we talked about that last week. This week, we will be talking about joy and I am required by law to have some bad jokes prepared for you guys. I, I got like a hundred of these bad jokes. Yeah, they, they were texted, I know, and I, I found two, so I'm only going to do two. You know, so that, that's all we're going to do today. Okay, so here we go. Why did the mom shush her kids at the tennis match? Because they were making a racket. Any tennis players? Okay. I, I can kind of play tennis, not very good at it. Better at table tennis. 
What kind of fish tastes the best with peanut butter? Jellyfish. Wouldn't it have been gross if I said like yellowtail or, or snapper made it a little more local? Don't, don't eat little jellyfish. That's, if you take anything away from today, don't eat jellyfish. Our scripture reading is here on purpose. I've asked my wife to read this for us. So honey, would you please do that? Hello again. <laughs> Let's pray. <sighs> Papa, thank you for your willingness to meet with us anywhere. We are so thankful there is nothing that can separate us from your love. Help us to live in step with you so we can be a joy-filled people whose very lives speak Jesus to the world around us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Will you stand with me for the reading of the word? You may recognize this one. This is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Blessed be the word of the Lord. You may be seated. So yeah, we're, we're in the fruits of the Spirit. And last week, I encouraged us all to start memorizing that passage of Scripture. Uh, it's one of my favorite passages. I've had this one down since I was a kid. And I'd encourage us all to just have that ingrained in our hearts. Uh, last week, we talked about love today. I'll be talking about joy and, and what that joy means. And I got to get this microphone on comfy. There we go. And joy, we use quite a bit for, for some different things. And, you know, I talked about how love, was, we use that a lot. And joy is similar. Maybe not as much as the word love, but we do use it. And it can sometimes be a little confused. But um, I just want to talk about joy today. Joy simply is just a natural response to a situation or a circumstance, okay? It, it, it's just that. Uh, it's not something that we have to force. It's just something that, that happens. It's like scratching against my beard. There we go. Joy is something that just happens. It's a response to a spontaneous event. You might be excited when you catch a really big fish and you're like, yeah, it's going to make a delicious sandwich when I get home. Uh, you may be exuberant when your favorite flavor of seltzer water goes on, like buy one, get one at Winn-Dixie. All I'm going to talk about seltzer water today, I promise. You might feel some joy when your sports team uh, does super well. Recently, we've been following the, uh, the Florida Panthers, and they're, they're really good this year, hockey team. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I wasn't a huge hockey fan growing up because, like, they, they finally won their first playoff series since 1996. I was, like, five when they did that. So it's, you know, like, now they're in competition. And my kids are watching it, and my father-in-law will come over for uh, a lot of the games, and we'll watch that together. And, they, you know, they have a great time. Uh, last month, we got a treat. We got to go see the Panthers play the Sabres. Uh, Tom, my father-in-law, is a big Sabres fan, and, you know, we're rooting for the Panthers now. It's hometown team, woo! And uh, <laughs> we go to the game and Buffalo's not so hot this season, Florida's good. I'm like, okay, this is good. Kids will get to go see their team win. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And, uh, you know, Panthers are playing tight, but then Buffalo gets the first goal. And uh, my kids, uh, one of my kids is very into the game. He's a very passionate sports fan. So when it's up, it's up. And when it's down, it's, it's, it's down. So <laughs> I'm kind of watching him and he's doing okay down one to nothing. And then Florida scores, they're 1-1. They're and then Buffalo, like 20 seconds later, gets a really cheap goal. It's 2-1. It's and then by the end of the first period, they're up 3-1. And uh, one of my kids is just head is down. He's crying. He's like, we came all this way just to see this. <laughs> and I feel so bad for him. My other kids got pizza and, you know, there was a Coca-Cola sale. So he's like happy as a clam. He's like, I don't know what your problem is. Good pizza. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, oh, this poor kid. It's just so sad when your sports team's down. And uh, the Panthers this year have earned a reputation. They're called the Cardiac Cats. Uh, they, they don't like to just win the game right at the start. That's my preference. They like to, you know, make you sweat, and they like to come back. So uh, 
I think they score two goals in the second, and then it's 3-3 in the third, and there's a minute left, and I really don't want to deal with overtime. I, I just kind of want to get home faster. It's a long drive. So I'm like, can we just get an easy one? And, and they get one right by the goal. It's 4-3, and then, you know, the kid's pumped up. So... Uh, what I'm trying to say is joy is just that natural response. And when it's placed in something worldly, uh, it, it can kind of do this, right? You know, it, 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 it tends to be a response to a situation or a circumstance. Uh, this joy that's a fruit of the Spirit, that's this currency kingdom, uh, I want to say this, that joy is, this Christian joy, is the emotion of salvation, this joy that we're talking about is the emotion of salvation. This joy that we have is not situational, it's salvational. And I don't know if salvational is a real word, but I'm going with it. I bolded it on my notes. I'd encourage you to write that down. It's not situational, it's salvational. The focus of our joy is on Jesus. Peter says this in 1 Peter chapter 1, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Uh, Peter says that this joy is inexpressible. It, it translates to like an explosion. We can't contain it. It's that, yeah, feeling. That's the feeling that God gives us when we know his love for us. It's this joy that we get, this character attribute. It, this, this joy, it, it's not something that we can force. It's not something that we can just muscle through. It's an emotional response of the heart. That leads me to our second point. This is where the talk get, that gets cool is that joy goes beyond our circumstances. Joy goes beyond our situations, our, our, our circumstances, and what's going on. Uh, this joy that we have isn't, isn't flimsy. It isn't weak. It doesn't go down 3-1 at the end of the first. It's with us. It's with us. It's important to hold on to this love that God has for us that gives us joy because adversity is going to face us. We're, we're not promised a life free from stress or, or trials and tribulations. You guys know that. We're not promised that. What we are promised is a way through it. We are promised a way through it. The, the struggles that we're facing, these times that we're facing are not the end game. God has a plan. He makes everything work for good, and God is always with us. That's reason enough for joy. Gospel of John tells us this in chapter 16. Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Uh, at the last service, I, I, I had this, this mental picture of just somebody's in a, in a room and, you know, they're at a party right now and everybody around them is having a great time and they're just filled with this, this sorrow and this longing, like they just feel joyless and hopeless. So, Lord, right now I pray for whoever that person was. I'd ask that you'd fill their hearts with joy in Jesus' name. Remind them of your love for them. We're told we will weep, we will be mourn, we will grieve. But God promises us that our grief will turn to joy. There is a way through. There always is. James, uh, the, the book of James, very challenging scripture. He comes off swinging uh, with this in verse 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. That's an interesting passage. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials. Like, really? I don't, I don't find that joyful. I'm, I'm often... Uh, finding myself unjoyful at minor inconveniences, let alone trials. You know, I, I sleep wrong and my shoulder hurts the rest of the day. I'm like, oh, life is terrible. Like, <laughs> consider it pure joy. Uh, you know, that's, that's a very small example. So many of us are, are going through the, the, these hard situations and times. We've all been through a hard couple of years. We're told to consider it pure joy whenever we face these trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. 
We, we read throughout the, the, these themes of, of holding on to the hope that gives us this joy that produces endurance. They're, they're tied together, hope, joy, and endurance, this, this, this faith, this hope, this joy, and endurance. I want you guys to hold on to the hope that Jesus is our Savior. That's what gives us this exploding joy that provides endurance for this life. So, I, I mean, how exactly do we do that? How do we have the joy that goes beyond our circumstances? I'd say it's done this way, that we embrace our part in his story. We embrace our part in his story. There's a bigger picture. We're part of the kingdom of God. When we focus on our own situations and the things that are going wrong, I often get frustrated because when I do that, I try to fix them in my own power, and I, I can't fix my, my problems. I, I, can't, I can't even fix, you know, my things around the house. Like, I need trim painted. I'm like, Tom, please come, you know. <laughs> I, I desperately need my Lord, come and, and, and save me. And we all do. We need that for our lives. We, we rely on Jesus. We know him, and he, he loves us, and he's good. Paul, <laughs> he's great when he talks about joy, and there's a few passages, and, you know, I'll mention... Paul in a bit. There's this one in Romans, one, one of my favorites, and uh, hopefully you guys have heard this, but it, it, it says this in chapter 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies who then is the one who condemns? No, no one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God, from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or, or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written... And it says this in Psalm 44, 22. For your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're told there's no difficulty. There's, no, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. He always loves us. We have to hold on to that. I will say that at least a dozen more times. I feel like I've said it a hundred, but know that. That's where we find joy is in the love of God, and that's the joy that sustains. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, which you received and on which you've taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I've preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, this, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. God does what he says he will do. <laughs> he, he fulfills his promises. He has, he is, and he always will. That gives us hope and joy that we're talking about. Paul reminds us again in Romans, be joyful in hope, Patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And that there's a lot to chew on just in that one verse there. Be joyful in hope, like I said. Patient in affliction. When the trials are, you know, coming, just be patient. And keep praying. Keep pressing in. That's what we're told. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Love God. Love others. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Guys, we see it all the time. These, these lines are being drawn and they, they want us to, to pick sides and you know, each side is like vehemently against each other. And guys, I want you to choose God's side that loves everyone, 
that loves their neighbors, that prays for people, that blesses others. That's the work of the gospel. That's our part of the kingdom of God. Paul uh, has written, you know, several of these last scriptures that we were talking about, and it's, uh, it's encouraging to hear him talk about remaining joyful. Paul, uh, if you don't know, uh, oftentimes he was beaten up and thrown out of cities, and he'd just go right back in and keep preaching the gospel message. Uh, he was shipwrecked. He was bitten by snakes. Uh, he was thrown in prison more times than we would particularly care for. Uh, in prisons where he wrote several of his letters and, and in his ministry, and we still read them and we use them today, and they give us such great encouragement. So Paul, talking about remaining joyful in afflictions, I feel like he has, uh, you know, s- some ground to stand on there. And uh, he maintains this spirit of joy no matter the circumstances that he found himself in. That'd be my encouragement for us. We're, we're, we're going to have these tough times. We're going to have these situations. But remain joyful partnering with him and loving others well. We read this in Philippians. The the church at Philippi partnered with Paul to spread the gospel message. And Paul says this to them, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. We're given joy from God when we love others. It's part of the deal. It's part of this life lived in relationship with God. And I would encourage all of us to just press in to love God with all that we have. And that gives us this joyful heart. We yield to his Holy Spirit to develop these these character attributes that we're called to. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's pray and Holy Spirit, you're so good. We thank you for being here. God, help us all to to have joyful hearts. God, I pray joy in the room that you'd flood it now, that that we'd know how much you love us, God, that we'd know how good you are, Lord. Lord, I'd ask that you'd move through these situations that bring us down. Lord, we know this joy is not an act of willpower. It has to be has to be a response of our hearts. So Lord, stir up that response like an explosion in our hearts that's joyful, that knows that you've got us. Mm. Bring, Lord, your your awesome presence. Keep bringing it, Lord. I feel it now. You're so good, God. Mm. Use this place, God, as a beacon, a lighthouse. We we just want to be a part of your story. We want to be a part of your kingdom. Whatever part you've called us to, Lord, we want that. Bring it mightily. Bring it for all the generations in this room. Those those are my parents and grandparents and my generation and my kids' generation. Give them all joyful hearts. I I hope the kids are now just bouncing off the walls because they know how much you love them. (laughs) You're good, Lord. We love you. And we thank you. You're awesome, God. And guys, thank you so much for your, your amazing generosity in partnering with us. We're, we're so appreciative. Uh, events like the Family Fun Night and, and you know, our outreach and everything we do, the day-to-day activities of the, this church are made possible by your partnering with us. So we thank you. And if you're interested in doing so, the info's there on the screen. Uh, We will sing the doxology, and uh, it's about to rain children, as my dad likes to say. So let's sing that together. Here we go. Praise God. Uh, Great job, guys. Heard some cool harmonies there. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his face shine upon you, and may he be gracious to you and give you peace. And go today in the peace, the power, and the love of God. 
God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Remember, be thankful for five things. Encourage two people so we can get one lost child back to dad. Catch some fish. Hope your team wins. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and guys, thank you so much for joining us online. We love you and really appreciate you. Keep sharing this broadcast uh, on your, your socials and all that good stuff. Next week, we're talking about peace. It's going to be a good one. You won't want to miss it. We'll see you next time.